Look, I know we try to have a fun time here on Nerd Culture, but sometimes... Sometimes you just have to talk about the most evil things in the world. And I'm talking about some real evil shit. I ordered the new Google Pixel phone, and it's going to be here in two weeks. And I'm just getting really impatient about it. Okay, so, um, yeah, came back from the convention, came back from Stan Lee's Comic-Con, still really weird to say, and um, kind of the funny part about it is that I always forget about the end of the convention on what that means. That means you have to do laundry. That means you have to put away your luggage. That means you have to take all the stuff that you just bought and like find places for it because you 100% did not go, I'm gonna clean up my room before I go to this thing so that way I have room to put the new stuff on. Um, Of course you always, always, always overspend on all your stuff and and yeah, I found my situa- I found myself in that situation again. Um, and I've been to a lot of conventions, so this is should be this should be nothing new to me. This should be plain as day. But the one thing that happened this time that was really different was I um I learned I pretty much I pretty much learned that I love the drive back. That driving back from convention going is like, yes, I did it. I got everything I wanted. I, I got to see this person. I got to meet this person. I got to interview this person. I got to buy this thing. I got to learn about this thing and like all this other stuff and whatnot. And I don't think from what I know, many people have bad cons. Like San Diego, not San Diego, San Diego's International Comic Con, you have complaints up the fucking wazoo. Because that thing is so big and so difficult to get into. But the thing that I heard was the complaints this year that people are still complaining about San Diego Comic-Con. And the interesting thing about San Diego Comic-Con is that it changed last year. Last year they had digital badges. So you had to scan in and scan out, and that stopped from all the horrible scalpers from overflowing the place from these people who didn't pay legitimate prices and illegally got in. I was able to, for once in my life, sorry, not for once in my life, for once in many, 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 many years, because I've been going to San Diego International Comic Con before it was international and before I was like, like my mom took me in a stroller once. Like, I, no, not a stroller. That's the zoo. She took me into the zoo and a stroller a lot. But she did take me where walking was still difficult for me. I was a very small child when that, when I was in there. I was like, whoa, there are more legs than there are booths. Um, and and so my parents would pick me up and they would show me the comics and like they they would go like oh look it's a, it's it's a Disney animation cell and whatnot I was like oh that's so cool like what's a cell because <laughs> I was like six or five or whatever and um and so back then you could literally do this anywhere anywhere like full full on move your arms and. Before last year, you couldn't do that at all. You were always bumping into people. You're you're out of shoulders. It's really awkward. If somebody came in with a stroller, you're like, oh, fuck you. Like, how dare you? Like, how dare you bring in a child in a stroller? And especially, it's like, of course, it's one of those huge strollers that has the huge wheels that's supposed to, like, go off-roading or, like, go whatever. And you're like, really? You couldn't? You, you couldn't just carry the kid or something? Like, I know this is stressful for you, and I know this is hard for you, but, like, Come on, like we have an epidemic, a zombie-like epidemic amount of people in these walkways just trying to freaking buy nerdy shit. So the thing, though, is that San Diego, even though last year San Diego International Comic Con completely cleaned up their act, 
people are still complaining. They're like, oh, yeah, that San Diego International Comic Con is still the worst. They love it. We all love it. But it's still the worst when it comes to population control. And you know what's interesting? A couple of them I asked, did you go last year? And a couple of them said yes, and they still had the same complaints. And I thought that was interesting. I thought that was really interesting. Now, unfortunately, I was last year on the floor the whole time because I was doing interviews and because I was working for somebody at the time and I had clients. I had no no time for panels or for outside stuff. I, I was on the floor 24-7. And on the floor, it was perfect and it was amazing. And that's And that's when I realized, oh hold up, these people aren't necessarily complaining about the floor. There might be still be something wrong with lining up for the panels, that they need more panel rooms. Or maybe these things are getting so popular or the panel is getting so popular, they need a bigger venue. And that got me thinking a little bit about main stages. And that's why I loved, love freaking Stan Lee's main stage. Um, He has a main stage where people can just go up and go see these amazing people and whatnot. And I really wish San Diego Comic-Con, International Comic-Con had a main stage that everyone could just enjoy for the biggest fucking names. I'm not saying like Hall H. I literally mean go to this concert venue (laughs) go to Padre Stadium to go see this panel. And all that other panel stuff that would normally be in there, put that in Hall H. Switch them it up. Um, I think that would be cool. I don't know if that's possible because a lot of the time the people in like the park are like all separate entities and whatnot and I don't know if they would want to share that area. I don't know how viable that is, but it's an idea. But it's a complaint. Um, but yeah, the whole cleanup with uh, Stanley's Comic Con was really, really smooth. And um, something that I I actually picked up from Stanley's Comic Con, um, I visited the uh, Prism booth, which um, at all the conventions that they're at, I always visit them, and say hi. Um, uh, I guess to put it lightly or to put it quickly, I'm an, if you don't know, I'm an LGBTQA activist. Um, for years, I identified as an ally. And very recently, I found out that I'm actually asexual. And if you don't know what that means, um, it doesn't mean that I can like reproduce with myself, even though that'd be amazing. Um, it means that I don't find people sexually attractive and it's really weird it's really weird because i used to be able to because of my disability go go watch the sharing video if you want to know what the fuck that's all about but but my point is is that i had a moment where i was like okay i'm out i'm out as as queer i'm clearly queer and i need i need some entertainment and some relief so I went to the prison booth and I was I was nervous to go into the prison booth. For years, I've been going to the prison booth, visiting, saying, hi, hey, what's the new comic? Talk, talking about the new stuff, um, maybe the new issues. Um, back when um, gay politics was in the media a little bit more, we would talk about that or something. And and you know and you know what? I I I was I was actually scared. I I was worried to go into the prison booth. And finding out that they might not have a comic for me or about me or something that will let me discover myself. And well, what a big fucking surprise that the biggest publisher for LGBTQ uh, books and comics. So of course they had something for me and I picked it up and I'm reading it and it's okay so far. It's, it's a good comic. It's, it's, it's well designed for a web comic that, has been converted into a book. So that's coming along well. Um, but yeah, I was really, I was really scared and I don't know why. I have no idea why. It felt like, it felt like I was finally able to tell my girlfriend that I like anime 
Like that's that's the kind of nervousness that it was. It was kind of like uh, it was kind of like the the scaredness of going like um, of uh, <laughs> it was it was like admitting to somebody, no, I don't like Mexican food. Can I just have a quesadilla? When quite literally, you were the one who suggested to go to the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Um, that's not, that's not an appropriate metaphor at all. That makes no fucking sense. That's not relatable at all, <laughs> but that happened once and that just made me laugh. So I, yeah, I was scared. I was scared of going in. And as soon as I went in, somebody came up and was like, Hey, browse around. It's cool. And I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. And I had my sunglasses on. So like they didn't, I, I don't think they could see the, the tears that were about to come out. And, um, this wonderful lady came up to me and, and she said, Hey, can I help you with anything? And I'm like, yeah, do you work here? And she's like, I'm volunteering. And I'm like, Hey, do you have anything on, um, being asexual? And she's like, I don't know, but let me find the person who does. And then, and this guy came over and he's like, here you go. And I'm like, perfect. Thank you. And it was like the perfect size book. Like I really like thick, I like, I really like thick comic books. I hate I hate I hate manga format unless it's a collection. Um, I love reading it online in that form or like week after week after week. That's great. And that's why like subscribing to Shonen Jump online is so amazing. But um, yeah, she gave me that. And I just I just I just started crying. I broke down. It was like, oh, my God, like this is why conventions are amazing because you go and you don't know what you to expect and sometimes you get introduced to something new and when you're introduced to something new sometimes you realize something about yourself the same thing actually happened with me with uh anime expo i did not realize how much um <laughs> how much hentai i appreciated for its paneling because they were so they're so experimental with their paneling in hentai um as a comic book artist and whatnot you you can you can you can take a format you can take a panel and you can reverse it and you can upside down or you can do or you can just stick with this this formula and that's fine and sometimes you can make the formula work amazingly um, Xander Cannon, who created Kaiju Max, which you must fucking read, um, he has this subconsciously genius method of reusing his panels and reversing them and whatnot. And it gets you into this flow of of this like magic of reading his comics. And that's the reason and that's the reason why he was nominated for an award. Like, holy shit. Like that along with his story and bringing him a whole new perspective to something that was great it was cool it was really great but that was that was at anime expo found out that i could study hentai paneling so that way i could boost up my comic abilities or so that way um next time i publish someone i can help them out a little bit on that and that was really great um and for stanley's comic-con i I found some entertainment that helped me a lot with my brand new sexuality. I just realized this is a coming out video. <laughs> and I did not mean to do that at all. I just I just wanted this to be a little blog about the end of Stanley's Comic-Con and how that felt and everything and whatnot and and here I am admitting that I'm pen <laughs> that I'm asexual. <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's not. I, I. I mean, people like me, we don't deal with violence. Like nobody, nobody on the street goes like, "He's asexual, kill him!" Like the or like like oh, like there's no there's no homophobia against people like me. We're not out in the open to find out even what I am. At a certain point in time in the relationship, like you gotta. You got to really get to know me to even get to that part. Either way, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. Let's talk about something else. Let's let's continue the blog, this vlog on something else. Um. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm keeping this candid. I'm keeping this genuine. I'm keeping this real because 
um, because I love doing this and I love sharing and um, and yeah, um, the manga version of Neon Genesis Evangelion is one hundred percent better than the anime. <laughs> the anime is amazing; it's great, but everyone always complains like Shinji's such a little bitch. Um, and now I know why because they removed the points where he had any agency. I'm not even through the second volume of Neon Genesis Evangelion and Shinji has already shown two signs of like, yes, I'm a person, I can make decisions and I'm I'm not just a piece of shit. And um, and yeah, it's weird. It's weird how, how they literally took away two scenes in the very beginning of Neon Genesis Evangelion that just makes you go like, wow, Shinji's a little bitch. And then like it just continues like that throughout the whole series. So I'm very excited to continue reading the manga. Um, that's really cool. Um, and uh, I guess I'm just going to end it on good for you, Stan Lee Comic Con, for having so many American comics there and having it mostly be American comics. Um, and that if it was anime, that it was just art books now like i love anime and manga more than american comics i've stopped collecting american comics because um well i mean unless it says grant morrison or chris burnham like i'm gonna pick it up immediately or if it's Sandra cannon i'm gonna pick it up immediately but like i've i i'm done following dc i've never followed marvel i have i have my marvel i have my marvel gurus and they tell me everything about marvel and so they go like no you need to read this and i'm like yes i'll read that um but i'm done collecting american comics it just became too much um too many restarts too many things and i got an i i have and i told you so i said the new 52 is called the new 52 because they're going to revert back or change something. And they never let go of the word new in the new 52, which meant that it was a gimmick or not a gimmick, but it was, it was a saga or something or whatever it is. So they were going to go back. So I fucking called it, even though none of you watching this knew I said that. <laughs> so congratulations, Stanley Comic-Con for how for, putting on such a great show i honestly have no complaints um great great job Con in as in avon gillian congratulations <laughs> i'm Ramon gutierrez this is nerd culture it's a vlog it's a whatever it is whatever i'll see you later you